Nanotech, it already exists, but why should that matter? There's always room for improvements, always another perspective, another way to see and do things. <laughs> because perfection is a scientist's despair. If perfection existed, then we wouldn't be here right now. There'll be no need, or there'll be no infections, no diseases. No, I can't do this. No poison, no icy cold pieces of metal on your skin or even inside your body. No tears of pain and agony from your loved ones who are suffering. You. Today, I would like to propose an idea, a wish. Because ever since I was born, my mother's always been sick, popping pills into her system on a daily basis, even though I never worked. So day and night, I always wished for a way. So I can't do this. Yeah, but I can't do it. I can't do it. I just stop. You're amongst a group of friends. You yeah. really are. And it's a good, it's a good message. Yeah. We're really keen to, to hear what you have to say. We want to hear what you have to say. Yeah, you tell me. Is anyone allowed to stand to one side? Just imagine you're in your living room. Yes, I'm sure. Talk to your family. Day and I always wished for a way to restore her superhuman strength without actually hurting her. Then I heard about nanotechnology a few years back and wondered if it was possible to merge nanotech with medicine and apply that more often to New Zealand hospitals. I used to hear the word nanotechnology and how it was used to build huge buildings in America. So I figured if we could construct a building in America, why couldn't it construct an actual improvement in the medical biz? People are dying from disease. Many people may still be dying from disease at this moment. The Ministry of Health Board. What was that? What am I asking? <sighs> Ministry of Health Board says that the major cause of death is disease and injuries, like lung cancer, strokes, and even heart disease, because scientists have not found a solid cure. Because for every cure they make, another disease arises. W.E. Mona, a physical chemist from Stanford University, used nanotechnology to look at different parts of our DNA and how it works on a small scale. So small that it looks like a giant pool of colour as DNA markers. With this, they could, from every angle, I can't. Different conditions break through. I can't do this. Oh my god. I can't. My second door. Okay, child, what's on your next card? What's on your next card? I really can't do it. I can't do it. It's the, it's the same English class. I can't do it. I'll just use my phone, that's easier. <laughs> well, 
With this, they could take different approaches from every angle they can think of and find out how DNA reacts to different conditions, leading them to the breakthrough of curing diseases and decreasing the death rate. If this could be done in New Zealand, think about how many people would actually be fully cured from the days of suffering from almost incurable diseases. Major health risks like disease and injury can account for about one third of health loss in 2016. This proportion is not expected to change by 2016, apparently. Now, the Ministry of Health Board may be right on that, but that doesn't mean we can't save our life. Scientists, along with other fields, are the brains to innovation, so it, to improve what was left behind, to bring solutions to the challenges. With technology so advanced, we could use more as methods to analyze the DNA. to analyze the DNA that come from the hospitals to find another way, another cure that will reduce the harm that is inflicted on the patients, both mentally and physically. I strongly believe that if we use nanotechnology more often in New Zealand, we could have an answer to why the patients still died and an idea on how to prevent their ending, despite all the work and tests that are run day in and day out. Speaking of running tests, aren't you kind of sick of it? Sitting in a hospital, constantly waiting for your doctor that was supposed to show up an hour ago, but instead you get a nurse. Wheeling in one of those big metal tables with jaws full of needles, tightening the strap around your arm and sticking an icy cold metallic needle in your veins. And that's not the worst part, no. Personally, the worst part is the fact that they do this over and over again, probably at least twice a day, taking blood every time, one tube after another. I know that it's procedure so scientists can run tests on your blood and find out ways that they could solve the problem <laughs> if it were to come up again. But there's another problem that I wanted to bring up with the belief that nanotechnology could help solve it. I've never seen it, maybe because I was too young to understand, but I took a guess. I know you've felt it before too. Waiting for the good news of how they are doing and not even the good news can bring relief to you and your families because of the bad news. To save their life, they need to go through a life-threatening procedure. How fun would it be to hear that? Not fun, ever. Maybe not everyone knows this. I didn't even know this till a few months ago. There are patients that actually go through Shocks, weird. There are patients that actually go through unnecessary procedures and end up dying because of it. According to Dr. Carolyn, Dean, and Gary Knoll, the number of necessary medical and surgical procedures is 7.5 million. The number of people exposed is 8.9 million. If nanotechnology was applied to the medical field, there would be no reason to put patients under constant procedures to not only waste time and resources, but put more lives at risk when this could have been easily prevented. Now at the point of patients losing their lives, this idea can be both literal and emotional. Many people are injured but manage to heal after a major accident like car crashes. But what if those major accidents cause a person to lose a limb, an eye, or even a vital organ? The accidents that happen in New Zealand are so dangerous and life-threatening that the New Zealand Transport Agency recorded there are 164 people may have died due to car crashes last year. May not sound like much, but the number of deaths is only increasing with every passing year. So if this were the case, then the patient with the right kind of insurance would be able to have a prosthetic to replace what they lost. This may be an advantage for those who have lost a part of them, but it's only a piece of machinery that's attached to you. This may have been a huge help in getting yourself back on your feet, but emotionally you're scarred for life. But ask yourself now, how would you really feel if you were to spend the rest of your life in prosthetic? I have no right to say this, but there could be some people who are suffering because of it. Even prosthetics these days still have their limits. It may be a boost physically, but mentally. Oh, shocks. Not only can you lose a limb, but also a vital organ that can be crushed, and if that were to ever happen, 
then it becomes what seems like an endless stress of time. Douglas Bali estimates that by the year 2020, 8.4 million people will die every year from injury. And if you have ever seen a severe car crash, there is always someone who has damaged organs, which leads to organ transplant. Like unnecessary procedures, organ transplants take time and delicacy. So the transplant is not damaged or infected in any way. Also puts the patients in a life-risking situation that may put them in a position that's far much dire or far much worse than the procedure was carried out. By using nanotechnology, there could be a way By using nanotechnology, there could be a way that it can be reconstructed. Oh, I messed up big time. Eh? I lost where I was. There could be a way it can reconstruct limbs by reading the DNA coding of every component in your body from bones and veins to the muscles to the tissue and skin. This could benefit the patients because they would have no need for a foreign neuroelectric piece of equipment on them, slowing them down. It can also be used to remake vital organs that were damaged during the accidents. This could benefit us with the reduction of deaths and risk of putting the patient's life in a dire situation than it was before. Now I get it may seem impossible, but since when did the impossible ever stop humans from evolving. If there is a way, and I believe that there is a way, if there is a way to use nanotechnology and medical procedures as a substitution for precautions that would usually risk a life, then not only will we benefit from saving lives, but we could improve the medical fields in New Zealand without having to send your own patients overseas because we couldn't do anything here. No more time wasted waiting for resources. No more money wasted on unnecessary procedures or medication that doesn't even work. More life saved with something sm so small that it seems invisible to the naked eye. I grew up learning that even the most smallest gestures can save a person from despair. So think of nanotechnology as a small gesture and prove that even the little things can save her life.